If you watch The Big Bang Theory on CBS television, you see these clueless nerds who are doormats when it comes to the opposite sex, right? And you realize, is there any basis in reality? First of all, none of my friends are like that, and all my friends are physicists, right? Well, there is a kernel of truth, and that is some of these individuals may suffer from something called Asperger's syndrome, which is a mild form of autism. These people are clueless when it comes to social interactions. They don't look you in the eye, for example, and yet they have fantastic mental and mathematical capabilities. We think, for example, that Isaac Newton had Asperger's. The greatest scientist of all time was very strange. He had no friends to speak of. He could not carry a decent conversation. And yet here he was spitting out some of the greatest theories in the history of science. Calculus, the universal law of gravitation, the theory of optics. And we think he had Asperger's syndrome. Now Asperger's syndrome is a mild form of autism. And in autism, we have what are called savants. That is people that have an IQ of maybe 80, but have incredible mathematical and musical abilities. In fact, some of these individuals can hear one symphony and just play it by memory on a, on a piano. Other people could be in a helicopter, have a helicopter ride over Manhattan, see the entire New York Harbor, and then from memory, sketch the entire harbor. In fact, if you want to see it, go to JFK Airport in New York City and you will see it as you enter the International Terminal. So what is it about these people? Well, first of all, a lot of them had injuries to the left temporal lobe. One individual had a bullet as a child go right through the left temporal lobe. Another person dived in a swimming pool and injured very badly the left temporal lobe. And these people wound up with incredible mathematical abilities as a consequence. And so what is it about their brains? Well, Einstein's brain has actually been preserved. Einstein, when he died, had an autopsy, in which case the pathologist stole the brain without permission of the family. He just realized that he was sitting next to something historic, took the brain, took it home with him, and it was sitting in a jar in his home for decades. He even drew, drove across the country with the jar inside his trunk. And uh, there's even a TV special where you can actually see the cut up brain of Albert Einstein. And you realize, first of all, the brain is a little bit different. You can't tell by looking at it that it's so remarkably different. But you realize that the connections between the prefrontal cortex and the parietal lobe, a connection that is accentuated in people that do abstract reasoning, is thickened. So there definitely is a difference in the brain of Einstein. But the question is, did it make Einstein? Or did Einstein make this change of the brain? Are champions born or are they made? That still is not known because people who exercise mental abilities, mathematical abilities, they can thicken that, pro that part of the brain themselves. So we know that people who do well in mathematics, brain scans clearly show that their brains are slightly different from the average brain. So in conclusion, we're still children with regards to understanding how this process takes place. Tonight, don't go home and bang yourself on the left temporal lobe. We don't know how it works. We just know that in a tiny fraction of these cases, people with injury to the left temporal lobe, some of them become super geniuses.